Stop recording too, right? Yeah. Oh well. Start over. <laughs> what is the technical we don't even, issues? <laughs> we don't even know what it got or what it didn't get. So. Okay, so you just got a little bit off the place. Okay, so where we were before technical difficulties here. Well, we have 30 seconds for that thing. Okay. Here, I always watch for hands. And if these, these are looping punches here, here, okay, here, okay. And it's not, you know, to the to the testicles. You people think that you gotta go <laughs> when you don't because testicles are so sensitive. That's all it needs, and the pain's gonna go to your knees and into your stomach. Okay, so those are the type of here. That's why. People don't know the madness to the footwork here. This is to shift body weight. This is to shift body weight. Shift body weight. Shift body weight. Okay. Here. Taps here that wear the opponent down. Okay, here, throw that. I would lean here. You got stuff in the pocket. I would lean here. And even throw the elbow from here. Okay? But you gotta, it's opportunity. Opportunity. None of that. Oh, he's gonna throw the jab. I'm gonna trap him. I'm going to throw him down. That doesn't work. Everything is opportunity. If it's there, see, throw a jab. See how hard that is for me to try? It's hot. He's sweaty. I'm sweaty. That's difficult. Situation's not there. Okay? So if I have, use another. Use another option. That trapping. Look at, look at how he able to take his hand out. This hot weather doesn't allow trapping arms, maybe indoors. Or when it first starts and we're not sweating <laughs> and he's, hey you, but he's smart. He's not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that, yeah. okay? I ain't gonna go, hey you, because yeah. I've been in this game too long, okay? But just little opportunities that you might see slow your opponent down. You don't think that slows your opponent down. Here, boom, boom. Just gotta know. Where? Okay? Here. And even if... Okay? And when I... A lot of people slip, punches, and they go... They move here. Me, I put myself in such an odd position. For me, I'll slip the punch. Now I'm down here. What's he going to do from there? I'm, my whole eye is here. So anything he does here, I'm going to see. I'm gonna see. Again, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. Okay? That's why I don't slip punches like this. That's the traditional way of slipping punches. I put myself in an odd position that they, they can't figure out. So I'm here. Okay? Here. And then even. Okay? Do a little faster here. Okay? These blocks here, boom. I try not to do a lot of these though, because if he's strong, even me blocking that, after a while, okay, my strongest parts are here. Boom, okay, here, here, all right? It's all in one motion, okay? Uh, if, when I parry, I parry, I move. Parry, I move. Okay, here,
famous Floyd Mayweather. That's why it's so hard to hit him. Here, then he comes to the counter. Okay? But this is not my thing in the street. The street is knowing range, being calm, approaching, knowing what to do. Knowing what to do. Okay? Because I could do that, and then I'm here. And then I'm like, oh. Okay, what am I gonna do? There's no pause, I'm gonna go. Yeah, <laughs> no pause. You're approaching. Yep. Okay? No pause. You're approaching. No pause. Okay? Even here. Alright? No pause. Bring your body weight. Here. 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 Even slaps in the hot, sweaty legs. Stings. It plays with the mind. You know what I mean? So, sparring. It's hot out here. <laughs> Quick question. Just um, the psychological effect that you can place on someone by the small snapshots and the slaps that that and the hits and where you're hitting. Um, just go a little bit into into that. Well, the psychological part. Let's move underneath yeah. this. this give your perspective, and I'll give you a Wing Chun perspective. Okay. Um, the reason I do that is not more for pain. It's not about pain. It's about playing a psychological game on them. Meaning, they're so vulnerable that now their offensiveness becomes defensive, and they gu become gun shy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is Every punch I throw, he's fucking hitting me. Right. Either in the gut, in the balls, in the knee, in the shin. He's taking me down. You know what I mean? So it plays a psychological part. Some of it is painful. Some of it is not. Some of it is, fuck, he hit me again. Oh, he hit me again. Man. And then now it becomes where he, he's not trying to throw nothing because as soon as he throws something, he feels he's going to get countered either here or he's going to get you know that or even I don't want to do this because he don't have gear on but other things that I I do here is I'll take my hammer fist yeah. here Them or yep. here Phoenix eye yep. here okay or if he throws the punch here here yeah. okay or even here boom here okay this is not a spot people that hit people in but it damages okay it's practical and it's all a mind game. Boom. Oh, shit. Oh. It's all psychological. That's how I see it. Uh, you know, give your point on the Wing Chun um, side. We have what's called Pak Sao, which translates means slapping hand. So, a lot of times, you want to be very relaxed because you want to develop shocking power with the Pak. Now, Pak's not going to knock anybody out. But, you know, if I'm coming, he's throwing a jab at me, right? And, and I get that real pop, that crack. It's not going to hurt him, but it's going to get his attention. Uh huh. So that is a bit of a distraction. Also, there's certain places that people just don't like being touched. You just touch anybody on the face, right? Nobody yeah, likes that. Yeah, nobody You're, likes that. I don't have to clock you in the face. I could be doing something here. We could be get, and I just tap you That's on the it. face. Yep. A lot of times that will open up a secondary technique. Uh huh. So there are times when, you know, we might be some. I might be here. I just tap you on the face. That distracts you enough, now I can employ a wrist lock. A wrist lock, right? yeah. Or I can tap you here, now I can go for a takedown. Uh, take so down. it's those those slaps, again, they're not destructive, but they're distracting. They're distracting. My real goal might be a takedown, or it might be a joint lock. So if I face generals, nobody wants to be touched there. Nobody. You touch, oh, guy's and gonna do this. So in that instant, I'm gonna set something else up. Exactly. and. As you said, you see the lean down, it's all body movement, right? The human mind, this is why I study other things outside of the martial art. I study the human mind, the body language. The mind automatically is trained to comfort. You hit him in the nuts. Automatically arms, oh shit. That's your brain telling your body, you gotta comfort that until it feels better. And that gives that lean down position now it's, it's, it's open season after that, you know? And if you see a person go down like that and you and either you walk away because you don't want to do anything else, then that's on you. But if it's a life or death situation, you finish that man where he stands. Because if he gets up, 
he's going to be more angry than he was the first time he approached you. And it's going to escalate to something else. So finish him off. Okay? And also, these type of slaps here, and just here in a normal, normal standing position, and exchange of words are being taken. If I put myself in a range here, okay, see, I'm too close. So if I know I'm, I don't want to move to, to, to make that mistake to get myself away, so if I'm in range, I'm still in range here, okay? So if I'm talking, I'll quickly lean in, and, okay, here. But with, bam! Yeah. And that in itself, like he said, is not painful, but it is a five second distraction. And believe all, me. All I'm gonna do is what have my head, and that's, that's your window to okay. do what you gotta do. To do what you gotta do. Um, it's all about, to me, um, if you, if, if, I think you would agree with this. In the street, you have to use tax that's gonna end the conflict as fast as possible. I'm in good shape, okay? I do little rounds and stuff like that. I'm in pretty good shape, I'm 41 years old, but I do not want to engage like that with, with a person. You think, so we're doing this, you know, to mess around on the camera, but real life, ain't nobody doing this, all right? Come on, yeah. nobody's doing that, all right? That's, you know, for boxing, we, we, we watch pay-per-view, we watch Floyd, we'll let him do that, all right? Um, but in the street, you have to think very rational, very fast to eliminate the situation. If I'm approached, I have to already, while he's engaging me, I have to know what I'm gonna do. I can't wait till he's here. Right. Too late. It's too late. It's too late because he'll engage me already. So on the way in, I have to know what to do. Even if I'm here, like if he engages me like that, okay, I'm here. Even open hand slap. Wow. To the face, like he said, people don't like that feeling. It's not something that'll knock a person out or hurt, but it's something that'll confuse them. Here, boom, okay? Here, even from there, I come here, boom, okay? Kidney shot, here, okay? If, even from here, if I hit him here, I'm coming. And I'll, see, people do shin kick like this, right? They'll come. You know, you go like that. Me, I try to take from the knee down. When I come in, I lift high. That's why I block view. I lift high, I block view. And I come straight from the knee down. The same effect as if you're walking up a flight of steps and you slip. You ever done that? Everybody's done that, right? Like walk up a flight of steps and you slip. Boom. And for 10 minutes, your brain is on just that. Yeah alone like oh i gotta you know i gotta i gotta handle this yeah your brain shuts down so these are techniques that make sense in the street eliminate your threat very fast uh, what's your what's your outlook on street combat that's i wanted to always ask you that uh for us again i want to get in do what i have to do and get out mm -hmm. um you know that's why i really emphasize knowing how to bridge understanding the ranges um it's not about being flashy it's about being effective uh -huh. um, that's why I want to be well-rounded in, in the different things. I don't want to have an opportunity to pass me by. So that's why, again, I have the locking and the throwing. The throwing, yeah. Um, it's not about being pretty. Like, there's no second round on the street. So you have to get in, do what you got to do, and get out. And when you have the guy under control, get out of there. Mm -hmm. right? You don't have to stay, and everybody wants that movie knockout punch. You know, all I have to do is make you slower than me. Yeah. When I get you down on the ground, boom, I'm going, right? I'm not going to mess around. I'm not going to start talking to you. You know, I'm in, I'm out. I want to go home. That's the only thing that matters to me. Yeah. So, yeah, I, when I go in, I got to play for keeps. I'm going to be brutal, right? Doesn't mean that I'm trying to kill you, but I'm going to defend myself with everything that I have. When I put you in a position where you're done, I'm out. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it depends on the situation. If you're just some drunk guy, you're a little bit out of control, I may not need to knock you out. Again, that's where a good submission lock could come, yeah, in, yeah, come into play. Because you know you already have the advantage on him because his equilibrium is way off. Right. Things are way off. So it's no need to, to show out and try to knock him out. Just, hey man, calm, calm down. You know what but I mean? Like, yeah, but if you're coming at me, you're attacking me and you really mean me harm, 
play for keeps. You know, Absolutely. I'm going to put you down, and when I get you on the ground, I'm taking off. You know, probably better call the police to protect myself. Like, hey, look, this guy assaulted me, boom, 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 whatever, like that. Uh, and that's another thing. The, the person who first reports the incident is usually the person that the police believe. Mm -hmm. So if I get into an altercation, I'm calling the police. Hey, look, this guy attacked me. I didn't do that myself. So uh, that, that comes in a bunch of other stuff. But, yeah, I wanna, I'm want to. i going to get in, boom, 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 do what I got to do. In your out. class, do you explain the body language of the aggressor and the non-aggressor? Yeah. You have to, reading body language is key. Also, as far as, as far as, not to cut you off, as far as the legalities, cameras are everywhere now. This oh, is yeah. 2014, so, you know, um, I've, the body language, if he's the aggressor, he's probably gonna be like, this, okay, right? or more, you know, Pointing the finger. everything it, with the aggressor is coming forward, outwards. And I'm gonna be like this. Okay, I don't want and that's trouble. when you come here, and what I do is I tuck my chin right. and I say, hey, bro, hey, you know, I don't know problem. Hey, can you call 911? Right. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm here. You know, because I'm not, sometimes I don't want to engage. Sometimes I'm not in that mood. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, you know, I don't got a problem. And people thinking by doing that, you're a punk. When you're really just trying to avoid a situation because yeah. you know what you're capable of. He's the stupid one. Right. You're not. You know what I'm saying? He thinks, oh, look at him backing up. He's afraid. You know? You give him a false sense of confidence. Hey, call me a punk all you want as long as I get to go home to my family. I don't care what you say. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the only thing that matters is going home. So you want to, hey, look, I don't want any trouble. I don't want to escalate the situation until you put me into a situation where I have no other choice. Mm -hmm. Then I, I play for keeps. Okay. One more thing uh, before we wrap this up. Um, I'm gonna speak uh, uh, about Jeff. Um, it was great working with this guy, okay? Um, um, he is uh, super humble, super um, open-minded. He didn't come here with an ego. Um, we were able to demonstrate on each other, no egos. And I think that anybody who watches this footage needs to learn from this and needs to see that Somebody from, well, I'm originally from New York. I, I've been in Florida since 2003. Um, he came all the way out from Philadelphia. Okay, he was in the Tampa area. He's been doing things here in the Tampa area. He reached out to me, and we met over the internet. Um, it, it was a pleasure for me to do this. And I got uh, another good friend of mine. He's like my family, and that's Mike. Okay, and um, working with Jeff, whoever his students are, you guys are very lucky because there's not a lot of senseis. Well, he's a sifu, sensei is for Japanese, right? So he's a, he's a sifu, and to have a trainer or te, uh, a practitioner like this is, is very, very once in a lifetime because I've been to many schools, I've seen many things, and like I said, the, the practitioner, the main practitioner in the room is unapproachable at times, and that's not a good thing. Um, and I enjoyed myself today, is there yeah. any, anything you want to touch on on the on, on my said, style? Uh, yeah, it was really eye-opening. Got, definitely got more insight into what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, better appreciation for it. Uh, like I said, I like to look at the different things that are out there. I can take that information, experience back to my school, my students. Now we have more food for thought. Hey, what would you do if I came at you like this? That makes me look deeper into my Wing Chun mm -hmm. and make it even more flexible and applicable to what's out there. You can't go around putting the blinders on. Mm -hmm. There's so much stuff going out and everything, if you don't change and grow and evolve, you're dying. So, Absolutely. you know, I, I, and even beyond that, I got to meet two great guys today. You know, I have two more brothers that I can add to my martial arts family. Absolutely. And, and we're definitely going to do this again. It was a great experience. I, you know, I appreciate you inviting me into your home. Yeah. And, um, Ah, you're like, Memories for a lifetime. This yeah, awesome. well, Jeff is like Jeff is like uh, family. We've been talking on on Skype, and um, so it's not. It wasn't strange when I met him. It was just like, hey, this is in person now. But we have already talked on Skype, and we've chatted a lot on Facebook and on the internet forum. And this is just a good experience. And overall, um, to answer uh, uh, not to answer a question, but to say this: this is. This is something that I want to reach out to children, women and children. 
And that's where I want to take this martial art, is to the women and the children. And not to exclude men, but you're a practitioner. Okay, he's been in the military, or well, he's still in the military. I've trained people. Men come with their ego right here. They don't know how to fight, but they come with their ego right here. And then you try to train them and they're like, no, well, I don't punch like that. I punch like this. Mm -hmm. Then I say, okay, then punch like that. Let's go over here and you come and try to punch me like that. See how that don't work? Okay. You know, but with women, they come with that, not that ego. They want to learn. Children want to learn. Right. They, the women feel vulnerable because they're women. Children feel vulnerable because they're children. So they, they take in more than what a grown per man will take in because it's ego with certain people. And I don't know right. if you experienced that in your, in your school where they come in at first and they're like, you throw on mitts and they want to blow through your mitt. <laughs> Bow, see, I'm strong, right? I'm strong. Yeah. Like, yeah, but if you have no technique, the strength is nothing. Strength and power, two different things. Strength and yeah. power, skills pay the bills. These are people underestimate Mike all the time. Big guys always approach him until they get, they get pressed up on the floor. Then they're like, what happened? Right. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, we need to cha we need to teach the youth and the women to stop rape from happening, stop bullying, stop kidnappings. Okay, and that's what we need to concentrate on. Not uh, I want to teach you so you can go and kick somebody's ass. Yeah. You know that doesn't. Uh, and and to me, uh, to be honest, winning or losing in the street is irrelevant to me. Okay, okay? that's not a, that's not what it is for me. When I go into a place, if I get into a confrontation. It's survival. I want to go home. Not, oh, I won the fight. No, I want to go home. Right. We train to fight when we don't you know? go looking for fights. I mean, you're going to, who you are as a person, your martial character, that's going to have impact daily. Mm -hmm. You know, you hope that you never get into a real fight. You know, so it's more about what's going on in here and here than here. Yes, we train these, but I'm not, I'm looking for a way to not use them. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to live a life of service, you know, talk to people, build people up, not spend my time thinking about how I'm going to destroy somebody. And we as martial artists, you know, we've got a lot of work to do. There's a lot of people out there who need us. Absolutely. A lot of people. And, and we have to build people's self-confidence um, since it's, it's helped me with my confidence, everything that I know, you know. Um, and still, as being a practitioner, I feel like there are holes still in my game, and that's why I practice. That's why I like to get, get together with other practitioners, with other styles. So when I'm in, or in a, an engagement with another person, he knows another style, can I handle myself in that situation? Because you are going to encounter somebody who knows how to fight once in a while. Not all the time because your, your average person in the street don't know how to fight. I did the, the statistics and I think there's maybe like a five percentile of people who really know how to fight. And usually those people don't fight. Right. Okay, so, but the majority of people on the street they don't know how to fight, and they're the ones that start the confrontation and speak very loudly and, and stuff like that. So um, I want to give a couple shout outs. One uh, to my uncle, uh, David, AKA Hammer, one of the best street fighters that I know. And I thank him uh, for, sh for, for putting his style and showing me what he does. Um, you know, I'm a 1973 baby. I grew up in the break dancing era, so I took the b-boy style which is up rocking which my uncle david is the originator um, of the style he was the one that if you could look him up on uh if you want to you can do a little bit of history on him um he's on the little dave rockers on youtube and he's the originator of that break dancing style that transitioned into the 52 block style that's the history of 52 blocks it's, it came from there it's like i said to you and have, uh, like you've seen it's more of a fainting style, more of a confusion style, more knowing how to not be in range, how to move out of range, how to not get caught with too many punches. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets hit. I don't care how good you are. Floyd Mayweather, the best, right? Defensive fighter in the world. Madonna hit him a couple times. People get hit. All right, so you're not invincible to get hit, but sometimes, like I said, in engagement, you got to take that chance. Sometimes you got to take that chance. You know, once you're inside, if you could take one good and get inside yeah. and you know you're good in there take the chance you know what i'm saying so i want to give a lot of thanks to 
to Jeff, man. He, he's a real good dude, man. And anybody that's uh, training with him, you're lucky, man. I wish I was out there in Philadelphia. And I want to say hi to his uh, everybody in his class. And uh, thank you very much for having me, Jeff, man. Oh, my pleasure. He's laughing, man. We over here hot. And yeah. he's like, JR, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> cool. Peace out. All right, see you. one good and get inside yeah. and you know you're good in there take the chance you know what I'm saying so I want to give a lot of thanks to to Jeff man he, he's a real good dude man and anybody that's uh, training with him you're lucky man I wish I was out there in Philadelphia and I want to say hi to his uh, everybody in his class and uh, thank you very much for having me Jeff man oh, my pleasure he's laughing man we over here hot and yeah. he's like JR <laughs> shut up <laughs> cool. peace out All right, see you.